What's up riders, old man Ronan here. Welcome back to the channel. And we're at part two of the trip to Savannah for the Royal Enfield Classic uh, 350 reveal for North America. And I'm telling you what guys, I'm having a blast. And you're seeing some of the stuff we've seen here from this uh, plantation called Warm Slope. And I'll tell you, this is a beautiful place, guys. It's, uh, here, they're going to be filming me here, which is amazing. That's awesome. We, uh, we're, uh, we're really enjoying this uh, Warm Slow plantation, and uh, I'm going to be putting some footage of uh, the ruins and some of the uh, sites uh, around the area. It, it's, it's just simply gorgeous. Uh, I, I love this live oak <laughs> uh, lined road. It's just been a unique experience, and I want to thank Royal Enfield with all my heart for inviting me down here because I'm having an absolute riot riding these fantastic motorcycles and also getting a chance to uh, to have fellowship with uh, with fellow riders, and it's, uh, it's amazing. And I'll tell you what, guys, if you want a brand that's really supporting lady riders, uh, Royal Enfield's one. They really are. They really are a, a, a key supporter of female riders, and I think that's really important. So in the first part of the video that you watched here last week, uh, we showed off the the classic 350, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you how much I enjoy riding the bike, and and, and the, some of the differences between the Meteor and this bike. Back in the studio, I decided to uh, go directly to the Royal Enfield website and get some key difference numbers. I know you numbers guys love this. And the basic number differences are, number one, the wheelbase is 55.12 inches on the Meteor 350, whereas the width of it is 33.3 inches. The height is 44.88 inches. Curb weight, 421 pounds. Fuel capacity, 3.96 gallons. And of course, the rear wheel is 140 by 70 by 17. And of course, the seat height is 30.12 inches. Now for the Classic 350, the key differences was wheelbase 54.7 inches, width 30.9 inches, height 42.91 inches, curb weight 430 pounds, fuel capacity 3.43 gallons, and the rear wheel was 120 by 80 by 18. And of course the seat height was 31.69 inches. In a nutshell, the differences are obvious. One's a standard, the classic 350, the other is a cruiser. And just by looking at them, you can tell exactly how you're going to be comfortable. Meteor, both of them are great on long rides. A Meteor would be a little bit more comfortable in my humble opinion. Now back to the video. Well, let's talk a little bit about what I really think of this motorcycle as far as a, a everyday driver. I think this bike is a really good everyday driver. I think that uh, you can outfit it, I, and I've seen a lot of them with the uh, the uh, oiled uh, canvas bags, and I think that is really ideal. They uh, it would fit the way that this bike looks 100%, and I really do, really do like that uh, style. So if you guys are looking for an everyday bike in a 350, I think the Classic is a really good motorcycle. Um, I'm going to tell you later about what I would pick between the two, between the Meteor 350 and the Classic, uh, but it's going to be based upon my first impressions, not after riding one a long time, obviously. Because I've only been riding in a couple days, maybe put, maybe put 50 miles on it. So that enables me to do a first impression. And uh, I'll tell you what, I do, I do really enjoy this engine. I do love the stance of it. I, I love the, how it makes me feel. The ergonomics are great. Just a little of the accoutrement with that little lights on the front, that, you know, the throwback to the old classic, I think is really cool. Uh, I think that's one of the most uh, attractive. Is it, is it important? No, not at all. But it's not like a rider mode, <laughs> you know, not technology that's going to go kaflooey on you. It's just kind of cool. And they're, they're right here. There's the lights on either side. And it's almost like a, a daytime uh, running light. And I, I, think it's, I think it adds to the, the look of the bike. And at nighttime, I'm sure it looks really, really nice. I think it'd be a really cool little fun and unique uh, a unique feature of the classic series again this bike looks like it comes right out of world war ii and uh into the you know into the 40s and 50s and i think it's just a phenomenal phenomenal looking bike and of course this 350 engine to me is without a doubt amazing i think that's kind of what the uh this video is going to be about is about my first impressions how it makes me feel as a rider and uh uh, I'll tell you, I think it's I think it's a strong, strong motorcycle when it comes to to uh, something you could ride 
I mean, it's really similar to the Meteor, to be honest with you. The, stand, the rider stance is different, and I think it's going to be uh, a personal choice, to be honest with you. It's, it's not going to be something that's, uh, you know, well, it's going to be this, but no, it's going to be your personal choice. If you like the, I was talking to her two wheels about it, and she likes this stance better than this, she would in a forward control, and, and I get that. I mean, some people like the forward controls, myself being one of them. I like, when I'm on a cruiser, I want to be able to cruise. If on a, I'm on an everyday bike that I want to be able to go and you could really take this bike if you really wanted to and change, you know, upgrade the suspension a little bit. You could actually make a scrambler out of it. You know, something you could take on both gravel and uh, uh, off-road. Uh, I, I would say it's more apt to that than what the Meteor 350 is. And so that's something that I think uh, to be in consideration. If you're looking to buy one of these motorcycles, you can do more things with it. However, is it any better than the Meteor? Uh, it's, that's going to be a personal choice. And what I mean by a personal choice is, a, and, and the, really the determining factor is the riding stance. It's more that the rider triangle uh, is 100% the difference between this and the Meteor. Everything else is completely the same uh, as far as engine-wise and as far as being able to, uh, to, be able to ride uh, with a similar type of feel. It's very smooth. The, the, the transmission shifts very efficiently. It's very tactile. Uh, the feel of the bike, uh, again, the most important thing, guys are going to say, well, it doesn't have a tack. You know, I could, I, uh, that's something that never has been a concern to me. I don't like to run it way up to the red line anyways. That's never been my style. Uh, I, I kind of like to see it just for information purposes once in a while, but be honest with you, for this here particular type of thing, I, uh, I, I think it's not really that important. What is my first impressions of the Classic 350? Let's go, let's go play by play. First off is the stance. I think the rider's stance on this bike is, is really good. I like the mid controls on it. I like the fact that I'm more sitting upright. The rider triangle is nice. Um, my, uh, I, my legs are, are pretty comfortable. I've, I've been riding this thing pretty much all day, and uh, we've, been, we've done a lot of cool things, but we've also been on a bike a lot. And so I really wanted to give you an idea of what my feelings were as far as the rider stance. I think the rider stance is, is, uh, is very, very comfortable for an everyday motorcycle, and I think that's the best way to me to describe it. It's, it's a very well-balanced machine. And that brings me to that's right, the handling. The handling of this bike is actually really strong. I think it uh, actually outperforms the Meteor just a little bit based upon how it's set up. I think it, uh, it's very, very nimble. It's very, very smooth. And uh, I think that, uh, that the handling of it will give you an opportunity to do some stuff that maybe a cruiser-style motorcycle won't do. And I think that's really what's an important factor of it. Well, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the engine itself. I'm doing 65 miles an hour right here in this corner and uh, I'll tell you what, I really do think that the engine is one of the key points to this motorcycle. You guys know how much I love the 350 single anyways and the fact that it's uh, very smooth and it shifts very smooth but yet tactile enough. You actually can feel it going through the gears and I think that's you guys have noted when I even talk about the Continental, I really do love the fact that you can actually feel what the engine is doing and how the how it's uh, actually feeling when it comes into uh, uh, moving between the gears, and that's kind of an important factor for me. I like to I like to ride by the seat of my pants, anyways, and so with me using the tactile function of the engine, uh, the uh, in transmission, I can tell pretty much everything the engine's doing without having at all without having a tachometer and I think that's something that's really 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 important so this is a very good bike when it comes to that now let's talk about fit and finish this probably is one of the most attractive motorcycles on the market today based upon the uh, old school and the nostalgia look I think this bike has got everything that it needs to have in a, in a in a retro style motorcycle this thing looks like it's from the 40s and 50s without a question and that really really trips my trigger. I, you guys know me. I'm an old guy anyway, so I love to relive some of my uh, past. And so I love the look 
of a older style motorcycle. It's kind of one of the reasons why I've ridden Harley Davidsons my whole life, and one of the facts I've ridden Triumphs and Nortons and, and the Hondas. And you know, the last Honda I had was an '83, so it wasn't a modern mo motorcycle. And we only sold it a couple years ago. Uh, it's one the Iron Lady learned how to ride on, basically. But that's the kind of stuff that I really do find uh, a big part of the attraction of this motorcycle. It, it really, truly is a beautiful motorcycle. Now, what don't I like about it? Well, I have to say it is a very small list. And the number one thing I don't care for so much is the fact that the shifter is a little bit short for my big feet. <laughs> I would prefer maybe just a little bit longer shift uh, uh, lever and I think that would be something that I would really enjoy uh, and be a little bit easier for me to uh, to negotiate stuff. I, I like I like a little bit longer shifter. Uh, that's really the only thing I don't like about it. I, I think that it's a it's for what it is a small uh, lightweight motorcycle that uh, that uh, is very very fuel efficient and uh, we're gonna come to that here in a second too. This thing just is fantastic with fuel economy but the the coolest thing about the thing is the fact that you have a nostalgic looking motorcycle based upon the 1950s or 40s and 50s and then you've got a motorcycle that's very very fuel efficient and with gas the way it is this thing is getting between 65 and 75 miles a gallon and I've heard it's upwards of 85 miles a gallon you know like we did on the Meteor we Meteor we had a couple times when we were up really close to 90 miles a gallon so it really depends on how hard you're running it and what kind of roads you're on but I'm telling you the bike literally will do anything you ask it to do and you seen we were in the speed there of over 65 miles an hour and we had more throttle left we really weren't uh, really weren't stressing the engine whatsoever and this engine is also electronically limited just like the uh, just like the uh, the meteor is as well too so what we're doing here guys is going around the corner I want to make sure I get this in and finish before we uh <laughs> huh. Let's go mess up our pictures. How about that? Let's mess them up. That's what we want to do, mess up the pictures. That's our whole game in life is to mess up these pictures. Don't! Hello. He's, he's getting him uh, past the tree, so I don't think the, the folks in the bench are in the way. <laughs> That's what I said. I would say I was commenting. Don't, don't. Let's mess up the pictures. Just for fun. Ready? So what we're doing right here, if you notice the photographer on the side there, we uh, we really want to uh, help these guys out by uh, by getting some good footage for the Royal Enfield site, and uh, that's it's a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff. I mean, with Press Day, we're at the whim of Royal Enfield, and we really love doing it. I, I want to thank uh, Royal Enfield uh, North America again for inviting me down for this thing, but we've told you about why we like this bike, and it ranges from the, uh, the, uh, the way the engine performs, the way the seating stance is, to uh, how, how the bike actually runs and makes you feel. And this bike be honest with you makes me feel fantastically I think this thing is so much fun uh, now people are gonna ask me before I end up which do I prefer the meteor or the classic 350 and let me give you uh, the idea I'm not gonna give you a review would I love to have this bike I would love to have this bike and that's why I don't like to do a review until after I've ridden it a while because your opinions can change based upon how your writing style is and how your writing style morphs and what you're actually taking it to do. But is this a motorcycle that I would consider buying? By all means. I think this is a great, great motorcycle. Well guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you had, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell notification button. Share and comment. You know I read all the comments and comment on as many as I possibly can. Until next time guys, ride safe and keep her on two wheels, baby.